Hey, happy March Madness, everybody. I'm Justin Young. He's Josh Tech, and we're the Hoopscene.com team. We've been breaking down the bracket so far here on the Fast Break, and Josh, it's been so much fun. We've been diving into it. We talked at length about Thursday's matchups. We want to make sure we do the same thing for Friday. Listen, we're trying to help you out. If you need a good excuse to, to skip work, if you're trying to find, figure out when to skip work, we got you covered. We're going to go through all the games that matter. We're going to give you some upsets along the way as we break down the Friday slate from the very first game at 12:15, all the way to the middle of the night back out there on the East coast on Friday, as we continue the first round matchup breakdowns, uh, Josh, ready to go. You got the caffeine ready to roll. I'm always ready to go. I, I don't need caffeine when it comes to the first round of the NCAA tournament. I feel like that's an injection. That's one of, this is one of the few times of year where like the, the, the energy brings itself, right? Like you don't need the caffeine. Well, wait till you <laughs> either have a newborn or be really old or be both. I, I think, I think you would argue differently because <laughs> I need all the caffeine I can get. Well, Hey, I'm not, I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to get to that point. So right now I'm, I'm just living off youthful energy here. Well, thank you. Good. You enjoy it while you can, because when it goes away, it's gone. You just never can, you can never <laughs> recoup it. So uh, let's get right into it here at 1215. I think we've got a really fun one right out of the gate as we've done, as we do. And I think that the tournament committee does a pretty good job of kind of really ushering us in with two real programs that know all, all things about playing in the postseason, regardless of sport. You got the number 10 seed USC playing the number seven seed Michigan State uh, right out of the gate at 1215. We're going to start the action on CBS uh, with that one. And you know, I we talked before we got started. I actually, I, I think I said I'm shocked that Michigan State got a seven seed, and you think you said I think they're going to win it. So we're at two different parallels on where we're at with this. Why do you feel so strongly about Michigan State? Because they have a guy on the sidelines named Thomas Izzo, and yeah. he wins a lot of games in March. And when sometimes you just throw things, you throw logic out the window and be like, I just trust that guy, and yeah. I trust Tom Izzo to at least win a game or two. Like I'm not saying. I'm not saying Michigan State's going to win the championship. I'm not saying they're going to go to the Final Four. Hell, I don't even know if they're going to make the second weekend, but I just trust in Tommy Zoe to win a game. Yeah, I mean, I think that's fair, right? Like, I've always said, like, if I have a child that's good enough to play at that level, Tom Izzo's on my short list of guys that I'd love for my child to go play for. I think he's tremendous, tremendous coach. Uh, you're right, does such a good job in March. But, you know, you look on the flip side, you've got USC coming out of a pretty top-heavy Pac-12 I think they underachieved a little bit this season, given the talent they have there. I know they battled with some injuries and whatnot, but yeah, two things come to mind. And it maybe isn't so much about this year with these two teams. It's about next year with these two teams. My question is, is we've seen all these coaches, you know, just most recently with Jim Beheim. When do we see the end of the era of Michigan State with Tom Izzo, right? Like, is this, you know, he doesn't it's seem like a kind of guy that needs like this farewell tour or anything like that. I could see him just kind of riding off in the sunset quietly. Um, and so it does make you wonder, like, you got it to your point, you got to soak up all the Tom Izzo and March experiences that we can get, like Bob Huggins, and again, the first game of the day on Thursday. Uh, so I do think about That's that, fishy. and I think about – what's that? That's fishy. I just – I didn't re- I didn't realize that together. Two of the two of the uh, legends in the tournament that are probably closest to retirement are playing their first-round games. Uh, on the very first. something there, I feel like. Yeah, I mean, the drama is there, right? But on the flip side with USC, you know, I actually – I've got USC winning this game personally. I just – I like the young guys they have there. Um, you, you know, Michigan State, Ellis I think they're really coach well. up. What's that? Boogie Ellis is playing really well in the tournament. He guards to step up, and he's playing really well for them. Playing really, really well. I, I do want to see where we can set a barometer for a guy like Isaiah Collier, right, and like his impact on the program. We just saw him win his third state championship at Wheeler High School there in Marietta. Um, really one of the all-time great players out of the state of Georgia is going to be out there at USC next year, where maybe the Isaiah Collier, even though it's probably going to be a one-and-done experience, I do wonder, like, how much better will USC be next year with all these young guys that we got coming back. So set the standard where if you're looking for a favorite going into next season, depending on who stays for USC – I really like the Trojans a ton next year, but I do think that they get through at least this first game on opening day of the tournament on yeah. Friday. Um, all right, Josh, I'll throw it to you. Well, I, I guess we keep it going. The very next game is at 1240 on True TV, which is shout out True TV. It's the only time of the year we all watch True TV, I think. Um, our friends at Kennesaw. Got a, 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 my channel's guy every year. I forget where, what channel True TV is. have no idea what channel it is until NCAA tournament time. Well, I use YouTube TV, so I just search it. I never have to like go through. Uh, it's pretty. It's pretty great. And honestly, if you're a college basketball fan, YouTube TV is phenomenal. Like you've got so much. Yeah, it's it's a lifesaver. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's really good. Our friends at Kennesaw State made the tournament, Josh. They're playing Xavier. It's a really freaking tough draw, a 14 seed playing a three seed. A couple things. Let me kind of pontificate for a second. Please when I was young, when I first got in this business, I worked at Kennesaw State. I worked uh, – we were Division II. Tony Ingle was the head coach. I shared an office. My office that I have now is probably five times bigger than the size of the office that we had. We worked out of double-wide trailers. Um, we packed in our gym. It was tons of fun. But to see the to see what – and, again, most people that are watching this are probably there in the southeast. So you're pretty familiar with Kennesaw State. You probably know Amir Abdurrahim and his staff very, very well. You probably know the players really, really well. I don't think there's any doubt that everybody knows or knew that Kennesaw State could be a monster job. It took a long time to get there, almost two decades. And Amir Abdurrahim has been playing for first ever NCAA tournament uh, up in Greensboro, which I think is pretty cool. Hopefully a lot of owls get up there and take the trip up 85 and, and get up to North Carolina for this game because they got a really tough matchup in Xavier, who I know with a lot of familiarity there too with Jonas Hayes when he was on staff. They recruited Georgia really, really well. Xavier has always dipped down to Georgia. Um, but, man, regardless of what happens, I'm watching this game from start to finish. I'm going to fanboy out. I'm going to bust out my old Kennesaw State gear from when I was a student there many, 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 many years ago. Um, I'm excited about this game. I'm emotional about this game. And I finally appreciate what the uh, magic of March Madness is once I see Kennesaw State coming in there. So I at least want to say that. Shout out to you, Amir, and staff and team. And I hope you guys have a great time and, and really soak up, up, up the magic for all that it is. That being said, Josh, Xavier's freaking good, man. <laughs> They're really freaking yeah, good. Yeah, hey, like, yeah, this, this is a tough one. I, I really want, like, like you said, I want Kennesaw State to do well. I love the story. I love what that staff has done there. I love that they could probably throw a rock there from my house. Um, they're really close by. I love all. I love all of that. As a, as a Georgia, the guy that lives in Georgia, I really appreciate what they what they've got going on. But Zayn is really fantastic. Sean Miller has done a phenomenal job. He's dealt with injuries. Zach for ankles out. Jack Nunn is still a big man down there who can step out at the floor. He's a really big physical guy in the paint. And they have the ingredients that you need to win in March, and that is two guards that can go out there and get you a bucket. Sule Boom, Colby Jones, it's a really high-powered backcourt. John Miller seems really motivated right now. This this year he's played with big old chip on his shoulder because of all the stuff that he's gone through with the NCAA yeah. tournament stuff. He got, he got cleared of all that. So so Sean Miller is is back at Xavier doing a really great job, and I think that, that they're going to advance in this game. Yeah, Colby Jones is a hoops and preview camp kid back in the day from Alabama. A guy that I know really, really well. We've seen him play at our events over the course of time, too. So, yeah, this will be a fun one. I, I know um, I, I don't know if I'll watch many games from start to finish this first weekend, but I will be watching this game start to finish. And I'm with you. I think Xavier actually is a contender. You know, I had a friend of mine the other day or just yesterday on Sunday was asking me, like, hey, who do you, who do you have winning the tournament? I said, man, I, I genuinely don't know right now. Like, I haven't picked my bracket out. I think there's a dozen teams that can contend for the title. I think Xavier is one of those teams, to your yeah. point about Sean Miller really playing with a chip on his shoulder, really wanting to prove, like, man, like, screw you guys, which I'm all for. I love when that's the attitude. And that Xavier yes. team is really, really good. And a credit to the staff that was there before. They did a tremendous job of roster building and getting this group up to where they're yeah. at now. Um, really, really and good. They, they played in a tough Big East, too, man. Like, like that, really that, they played against some really talented teams. And, like, I don't know, I just, like, I guess, I don't know if it's just growing up in, in Louisville when they were in the Big East, but I really have, like, a fondness for that league. I just think, like, it's so gritty. It's so tough. I think that's my favorite conference tournament to watch the Big East tournament. Just Madison Square Garden has the the larger than life appeal. So I just really appreciate teams that thrive in the Big East. And I, I tend to lean towards them in, in the tournament. Yeah, I feel like the old Big East is kind of coming back a little bit, which is which is great to see. If we can get Georgetown back to what Georgetown used to be, it'd be really, really Please. good. Let's Please. get rid of the call and, and get Georgetown better personally. Um, 1240, so True TV, if you really want to watch a game, uh, we're totally biased on this one. I don't really give a crap. Uh, that's the one that you're going to want to watch just because it's a cool story. And hopefully it's yeah. a cooler story because we see Cinderella doing some fun stuff. Um, and we've got Iron Eagle on the call. we got Iron Eagle on the call on that one, which I love. Go, so, go. He's, he's, t he's taking over for Jim Nance, so he's going to be he's gonna be the more prominent goat in the future. That's right. I forgot about that. Is this Jim Nance's last tournament? This is his last tournament. Guess what? The Final Four is in Houston, uh, and Jim Nance graduated from Houston, yeah. and Houston is a number one seed. So – so if you're looking for some kind of magic, some kind of voodoo magic, some uh, some kind of collusion, maybe <laughs> there you go. Hello, friends. There we go. I love it. Um, I don't think you see Santa Barbara Baylor is going to be that much of a matchup. Although Baylor has been a little disappointing this year. Um, but they, they, hey, that, that one could be interesting just because Baylor 
playing this year. That's weird. Scott has, has been at its best with defense sided teams. But that team is just like a, a matador. They just kind of olay, let people, let people go by. And at Santa, or, sorry, uh, Santa Barbara can make that interesting. So I don't know if anybody heard anything you said. You totally froze up there because you're so excited. I think the internet sensor. Oh, sorry. I just said, okay, uh, let, let me recap here. Uh, Baylor, no defense. Santa Barbara could potentially make it interesting. Baylor, high-powered guards. Santa Barbara, probably not going to make it interesting. There you go. That's the cliff notes of, 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 of lag time. Um, shout out Adam Flagler, uh, one of the few Georgia champions there on the Baylor team, was part of the championship team a couple years ago. All right, Josh, I've got another game here at 2 o'clock, right on the dot, TBS in Albany. Number 12 seed VCU taking on number 5 seed St. Mary's. This is one of my must-see games of, of the first round. But this is, I don't so, know. This is what I'm so excited about. Why? Uh, St. Mary's has been awesome this season. They have, they have guards that are really good. Aiden Mahaney has been fantastic. Love They're them. a really good defensive team. And but VCU is VCU, man. That is like that is. I mean, they're a they're like an NCAA tournament stalwart. They always win games in that tournament. That team is always good. Like they are a like a mid plus blue blood. Like they're not like obviously they're not Kansas. Sure. They're not Kentucky. They're not Duke. But in like that next year down in that a a ten kind of world, that mid plus kind of world, they are like. Honestly, at this point, I would consider them a blue blood because they're always good. No matter who they got, no matter who their coach is, they're a good team. They're they're a threat in the tournament every single year. So I think this game is like just really great mid major kind of matchup between Sam Mary's. I, I think if you're a basketball purist, you're going to love this game because of the coaching. I think you're going to love. Randy Bennett is one of the most underrated coaches in the entire country every single year. Yeah, has not had a lot of success though in March Madness, and I think this is really a team. That can do some stuff. And the way I look at the bracket, I I do like them. Listen, if you have, if I'll, I'll even be crazy enough to say this, if you put St. Mary's in your Final Four like as a sleeper, I'm not mad at you. I'm not. No, that'd be fun. Like I'm not games. mad at you at all. Like I, I'm with you. I like this team a lot. This game, however, won't be like a fast. This is these are two of the two of the best defensive teams in the country. Both teams yeah. hold teams under 63 points. Uh, two of the top 25 defenses in the country. Uh, so if you're looking for high octane offenses, it's probably not the game that you're going to want to see. However, if you're a real junkie, if you're a real appreciator of, of strategy, I think this is a, one of the best games of the first round on both days. Honestly, uh, this is one of my favorite games on the slate. So that's a 2 p.m. tip um, in Albany, New York. So St. Mary's, you know, again, that's another tough trip to go from the Bay Area all the way up there to Albany. Uh, you're going from California weather to Albany weather. That's not very fun. So I'll be curious to see how many St. Mary's faithful uh, make that trip. Um, I'm looking at the rest of the day. I think all the games in the afternoon until that 4:30 game with Iona and UConn. I think they're all fine games. I don't know if I'm going to have to like if I have to go back to work to finish up some work. I'm probably fine doing it on Friday afternoon. No, what do you have? Like, convince me. This I, I is am. I am. Uh, NC State and Creighton. I think that's a phenomenal game. Really, NC State's got the most entertaining backcourt and. Probably the country and Creighton is Creighton's great. That's a great guard matchup. You've got a okay. lot of great guards, and then you got you got Ryan Kalkbrenner on Creighton, who's one of the best defensive bigs in the country. He's like the tall, lanky, slender kind of guy. And you got DJ Burns on the other side, who's more of a bigger, more sure. physical guy who also plays with kind of a, a finesse to him. So I think that's a great big matchup. I think it's a great guard matchup. I think I think one of these teams can make a run in this bracket. I don't know if I would predict it, but like if, if you see Creighton advancing really far, if you see NC State advancing really far, that's not a surprise. Both of these teams can make the Elite Eight. I'm looking at the bracket. Wow. Okay. Like Creighton, yeah, I mean, Creighton was a preseason like top ten team, and they had a yeah, lot of yeah, injuries. Yeah, right. and, and, like, I, I think, you know, I think the reason why is I just think Creighton's that much better of a team, and I don't know. If, I don't know. I, I like Creighton like by. A lot. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, I'm probably picking Creighton in this game too. I love the Blue Jays. I think they're so entertaining. I think they're so fun. I think, like once again, I think that that tough Big East really helped kind of, yeah. kind of, you know, shape them into a team that can thrive in the tournament. But with you know, like guard play in the NCAA tournament is is paramount. And I think Terquavion Smith and Jarkel Joyner are as good of a backcourt as you're going to find in this entire. Josh, tournament. in Georgia high school basketball, we have the region of doom. Is the Big East the conference of doom? No, the Big Twelve is. Yeah, the Big Twelve is crazy. The Big, but, but Big East is not that far. But I think the top the four in the Big East are as good as anybody. That's the Grim Reaper right there, bro. Yeah. 
All right. Well, I really like the Iona UConn matchup more so oh, for yeah. storylines that are outside of it. I know you're excited because your guy Ricky P. Uh, this might be his That's last right. game with Iona before he goes over to St. John's, which I don't know if I really like that much, to be quite honest. He might go to South Florida. Okay. Really? I mean, that's that was been prognostication by people who, who are in the know in the know in the know more than I am. He's a he's a Florida guy, and or he you know he had a house in Miami. I don't know. I mean, I know yeah. South Florida is in Miami, but like yeah. I don't know, like, I don't know. Well, regardless, you've got you've got some names that are just just like completely lined with Northeast basketball. You've got Patino, you got Hurley. I mean, it is a Northeast like bare knuckle fight. I like yeah. Iota a lot, actually. <laughs> They're a really fun I team. Do. I think UConn's also a team that could really make some, again. I think you have a lot of teams here that are that are outside the one, two, and three seeds that can make a run. Well, I guess Avery's a three yeah. seed, but that could really make a run to the final four. Uh, I really like this UConn team. Uh, I like what Danny Hurley's building there. Um, I think that they've got a chance to really grow into a real contender year in and year out. Again, bringing that Big East kind of flavor back to it. Uh, I think this is a really good game to kind of round out the day. Yeah. And quite frankly, man, I feel like Rick Patino, like if there was a stock to buy, I feel, if they win, I wouldn't be surprised. I don't know if I'm, I'm not. I, I would not want to face an underdog Rick Patino in the first round of a tournament. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And you know, I think I forgot which I forgot which podcast I heard this on, but someone made a great point of you do not want to referee this game if you have Rick Patino and Dan Hurley <laughs> on the sideline, you are going to get chewed out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the whole game, no matter what you do. You just don't blow your whistle. Just don't blow your whistle. Just be like, I didn't make a call. I didn't even think about that. That's pretty funny. So are you who are you take? Are you taking UConn or Iona? I'm gonna go with UConn just because that's that, yeah. they're, just the, they're just a better team. They have they have two really good bigs. Uh they have they have some really good playmakers on that team. I think their backcourt is a little bit a little bit of an issue. And I think that that is something that Rick Pitino can't exploit. But I think at the end of the day, UConn wins this game. But it's not going to be an easy game for them by any means. I, I think that's quadrant's really interesting because the winner of that game plays the winner of St. Mary's VCU, which would make a really juicy matchup. Kind of like what we saw for the Thursday matchup of San Diego State, Charleston, Virginia, Furman. Yeah. I think this quadrant, same, same seeds and everything. And the winner of that will have to play either Kansas or Arkansas or Illinois or Howard, one of those teams uh, from that quadrant in the, in the Sweet 16. That's juicy, man. That's really yeah, juicy. Yeah, there's just a really like this quadrant is really, really fun. Yes. There's just so yeah. much. Of, there's so many teams that I'm like, yeah, I would, I would enjoy seeing that team make a run. I would enjoy seeing yeah. that team make a run. So yeah. yeah, that's a ton of fun. I think that I think to me, this is a game of all the morning games. Um, obviously, I love the Kennesaw State Xavier matchup just for personal reasons. But as much as the VCU St. Mary's game is going to be like really cool for a basketball guy, I love the idea of Iona and UConn. I think I'll watch this one from start to finish. Um, there, yeah, that's there, that's there. great story right there. And in yeah. New York too. That's it. That's so that you know that Iona's going to travel. UConn's obviously going to travel. So that's that's going to be a really great atmosphere. Yeah, I like that one. Okay, well, I think that's a good pivot to Kentucky, right? We'll go from Patino and all that into Kentucky, number six seed, playing number eleven seed, Providence in Greensboro at seven ten East Coast time on CBS. The the main game we've got Iron Eagle on that call as well. I think this one's interesting. Like, what Kentucky team is this? Are they good? Are they a threat? Do they worry you? They, they. I mean, at times they have they have shown me that they can be a threat, but they are also going into this tournament a little bit injured. Like Casey Wallace isn't fully healthy. Severe Wheeler isn't healthy. Um, C.J. Frederick played their last game in what looked like a bulletproof vest because he broke a rib or hurt a rib or something like that. So they're not. They're they're kind of limping into this tournament, and they have been up and down all season. So I don't really know what we're going to get out of them. Um, I feel more confident in in what we're going to get out of Providence. I think that Ed Cooley is a phenomenal coach, and this this is a storyline right here. Uh, Providence's best player, Bryce Hopkins, transferred from Kentucky, so I think there might be a little bit of a revenge factor there, yeah. like maybe a little bit of a "I'll show you guys what I can do" kind of deal. So I think that this is when you really have to look at as an upset potential, and it's it's really hard for me to say Providence over Kentucky is an upset, but like you know, if you're going to go by seeding line, yeah, this would be an upset, obviously. I'm going to say, I think Devin Carter for Providence, a hoopsing guy, one of my all-time favorite guys, has a monster game. He is a big game guy. Yeah, um, He's played against a lot of those guys. I, I love Devin Carter. I think he's one of the best players that nobody talks about enough. I think that guy's actually going to play in the NBA. I really do. He's got that 
he, his game is not like Jose Alvarado, but like that competitive guy when it matters and he steps up and you're like, I ah, just annoys the shit out of me. Like he's that guy in a good positive way. I'd love Devin Carter. And I know he is going to be amped up for this game against Kentucky. I think Devin Carter is going to be a headline name out of this game, to be quite honest with you. And I like Providence in this one too. Yeah. Ed I like, Cooley, I like by the way. Do you? Yeah. Ed Cooley's on my short list too for, for my son to go play for long term, by the way. Yeah. Do, do you think that this is Ed Cooley's last game at Providence? Because there's a lot, like we've been talking about forever, there's been a lot of great job openings. And I think that he's linked to that Georgetown job a little bit. Yeah, certainly. I, you know, I always wonder with like that, like, is Georgetown a good job? Like, is it? Hey, how about, how about this? We put a bookmark here and we do this podcast on a different day. Yeah, like, like it's like I get it. Like, like, I, like I don't mean that. Like, headline chasing. Like, Providence is really good, and Ed Cooley has, has built an unbelievable culture there. Um, from there. They love basketball, at Providence. I think Providence is a great city. Like, I love the the arena. I love the setup there. Georgetown, cool. Like, I get it, man. It's Georgetown, but Georgetown, you know, it's it's funny. Like, Patrick Ewing was the coach there. Patrick Ewing, right? Like a freaking goat. Kids didn't care that it was Patrick Ewing. They didn't care that it was Georgetown. They don't care about Allen Iverson. They don't even know Allen Iverson played at Georgetown. You know what I mean? So, like, yeah. I don't even know. If, like, you have to be really relevant in the moment. And I think Providence is – Is I know that you're right. This is probably a different podcast for a different day. But I, I like – I don't know. I think Ed Cooley is a guy that is pretty thoughtful. I really like what he's built there. And I think a win against Kentucky in the tournament will certainly help solidify that legend status even more yeah. for him. I agree. Uh, but nevertheless, I like Providence in this matchup. Um, I think I have a feeling, I just have a sneaky suspicion that you love every single game the rest of this day. <laughs> I'm, I'm looking at it. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm looking at a tweet that our, our, our uh, my guy, Matt Norlander posted shouts to Devin Downey shouts to Chester, South Carolina. There's more of us than there are of them. Um, and yeah, there this, this is an incredible Incredible night of basketball. I'll be up all night. I'll legitimately be up all night. Um, <laughs> okay, you want to go again right after Providence and Kentucky is Drake versus Miami? Are you kidding me? I like, was getting out of the up, way. Upset, 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 upset. Is it an upset? I, I, I think Drake. I think Drake wins that game. I'm having Drake advancing in that game. Yeah, you, you're a big Drake guy. Why? Well, I think they. I think they've got a, a potential pro in Tucker DeVries, um, and and Miami is also a little bit injured. Nor, nor Chad Omier. Uh, went out of the Duke game with an injury. Um, I think Miami's backcourt's phenomenal. I think Isaiah Wong and uh, Nigel Pack and all those guys are really great. And obviously, like, guard play wins a lot in the tournament. So I trust their guards. But I just kind of think that this one right here is prime for an upset. Yeah, seven. Drake, Drake, has been good. Yeah. Drake is not a flash in the pan. Drake has been good for last year, the year before. They've been good for a while. So this has kind of been – this is something that's been building rather than it's like, oh, they're good. Like, look, it's not like a St. Peter's deal where it's kind of like, they get hot at the right time. This is a program that's been building and developing to this point. Yeah, I like that one too. I think it'll be tons of fun. Again, primetime game, TBS, uh, going to be fun to watch. Um, let's keep it moving. Let's go to, let's go to Denver at 735, True TV. Uh, man, we got the mighty program of Grand Canyon right here in the Phoenix area. I know you've got some connection there to the school as well. You got playing Gonzaga. Uh, I, you know, Grand Canyon actually is way – I don't think people realize like how good that team is, man. Yeah, that's a that's a great team. They have a really good coach, I mean, Bryce Drew. Yeah. I mean, yeah. from the Drew family, that's a hell of a uh, hell of a coaching family right there. He, he had success with Brett Vanderbilt. That's a really good coach. That's a program with a lot of fan support. I know that they're like all their you know hyped up fans that are probably on some kind of Molly or something like that probably won't be there in Denver. But um, <laughs> but but you know they still have a lot of fan support. But I think it's a, the I mean the Zags are kind of. You know, it's the yeah. Zags. Like, yeah. I think that's a tough one for Grand Canyon. Like, I think it'd be cool to see the Lopes advance. But I also, I a lot of people root for Gonzaga's downfall. They're always kind of like excited when Gonzaga loses, so they can be like, "See, Gonzaga's not as good as everybody thought they were." I'm rooting for Gonzaga to finally win one to get over the hump because Mark Few is one of those coaches that everyone's tabbing as he can't win the big one. But you you can't win the big one until you do, right? Uh, a guy that couldn't win the big one for a while was Jay Wright, and uh, well, now look at him; he's he's awesome. So I think there's just stuff like that. Like Scott Drew couldn't win the big one for a while. Well, he won the big one. And now everyone kind of has Baylor on that on that tier of teams that they're always going to go ahead and bet on. So I think I'm just itching for Mark Few to just go ahead and get one and just kind of cement his legacy at Gonzaga. I think I'm with you on everything you just said. The only thing that concerns me is Grand Canyon's got a bunch of transfers. They're old. They're physical. 
Um, yeah. Guys that are playing, for, are playing for something to prove. I'm with yeah. you. I, I think it's no, no brainer that Gonzaga is probably the clear cut favorite here, but Gonzaga will have their hands full with a team out of Grand Canyon that has a lot of older guys um, that will be really, really tough and really be primed to play uh, with, with all yeah. their chances they have. Sure. Um, one of my favorite games in the first round up next nine twenty East coast time on TNT, man, you got n- number nine seed Florida Atlantic playing number eight seed Memphis. To me, this is the best eight nine game there is in the tournament. Yeah, this is this is a this is a phenomenal game. This might be, I mean, this is one of the best games of the entire first weekend. Like this is this is so good. Uh, I mean, Dusty May has done such a good job over at Florida yeah. Atlantic. He's probably going to be in line. Thirty one wins. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, this is really tough. Like Memphis has been playing really well. I think they've kind of been under the radar for what they are. For 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 as under the radar as a program like Memphis can be, I think they've been under the radar all season long. They have a lot of experience over there. Penny Hardaway does a really good job at instilling toughness and getting his teams to play hard and you know play defend really well. They just beat Houston in the AAC Conference Championship pretty pretty handily too. I watched yeah. a lot of that game and well, Memphis was up. Down, the yeah. Well, how about this? They played they played Houston three times since February nineteenth. They played them three times in a month. Yeah, that'll toughen you up yeah. real fast as you get ready for. Yeah, the yeah. I mean, you that's that's you're they're probably limping into that game because they have all kinds of bruises from dealing with Houston's physicality. Um, but I don't really want to land in this. I just think this that's a really cool story. I think that's just they've been fantastic and really fun to watch all season long. So I'm yeah. gonna go ahead. I'm gonna go ahead and advance the Owls just just because I want to see it happen. Well, I mean, hard to bet against that, right? 31 wins. This roster, for the most part, are all homegrown. Guys that they've recruited that have been there for multiple years, two or three, four years for some of these guys, yeah. uh, fifth year guys that have you know got a COVID year mixed in. Um, but there's some continuity there. There are guys that they recruited. These are guys that they sought after. These are guys they evaluated and said, this is who we want to run with. Best season ever at Florida Atlantic. Um, not a lot of guys leaving that program that are part of that, that, that rotation, which why would you ever want to leave Boca Raton in a sport that's played in the wintertime is beyond me. Um, but again, I think Dusty May is also another guy that when you link him with other jobs like Notre Dame and other jobs. Yeah, that's, that's been, there's been a lot of chatter around that one. So I think that's. Yeah, uh, rightfully so. It's going to be his right. song down there. And if, I mean, I kind of want to see it just go as far as it can. You know, you do bring up a good point, though, about Memphis. And I didn't think about it until you said this. They, are, they have been under the radar, right? From Memphis. Memphis is a team that's been yeah. in the headlines for a number of reasons, for all the reasons you don't want to be in there with the Imani Bates situation. Yeah. And, it's like I feel like they, they they there's always some sort of drama going on with them. It's been relatively quiet, and again, this is a roster with guys that you know Penny really wanted, and and guys a lot of Memphis kids on that team. Um, yeah. Where maybe they just kind of strip that away, and that continuity really does play forward. So, th- I think that's why I really do think this to me is. I mean, I haven't I haven't ranked the games, but maybe this is one of the three best games in the first round overall in the whole tournament. I agree. Yeah, no, I, I certainly agree. That's that's it's it's in my top. Yeah, it's probably my top three, top five at least. I mean, it's it's fantastic. Yeah, I'm just I'm thinking through it. Like, I'm this will be a pick 'em for me until probably Thursday or till yeah. This, like, this is one of the toughest ones for me to like pick in the entire in, throughout the entire bracket because I was like I I don't have a, really have a great feel for it because yeah. of how how good Memphis is playing right now and how good Florida Atlantic's been all season long. So. Is it, okay, all right. So they would play. They would play the like. They're more than likely to play number one seed Purdue, right in the second round. The winner of this game. I yeah. feel. I don't know why I say this. It's probably dumb to say out loud. I'd feel more comfortable with Memphis upsetting the number one seed than maybe FAU because of the size and just like the physicality. Like I don't know if, if FAU is like super big, um, but I do. They've got, like they've got, a, they've got a big, big physical guy who can. I mean, he's not going to match up with Zach Eady, but he's you know fair. He's big. Yeah. Yeah. That's interesting. That one's juicy. I, I probably didn't look into this one enough, but I, I'm thinking, man, like for, for a second-round game, if you're worried, you know, Purdue had their hands full of Penn State, and both of these teams, I think, would come with that same sort of fire that Penn State played with against them. And Anyways. Purdue's not been – not been. I mean, they, they did – I mean, they, they won the Big Ten, so it's hard for me to say that they, sure. they, that they haven't been playing well, but they haven't been as dominant as they were early in the season. Yeah. Let's keep it moving. Um, anything jumping out at you at the 14 seed Montana State playing number three seed Kansas State? No, I'm, I'm really excited to see Jerome Tang in Kansas State. I'm, I'm having them advance. And I'm really excited to see what they can do in this tournament. I think that's been one of my favorite stories in college basketball this season is following that turnaround. And um, yeah, I, I have them advancing in this one. So not a lot of drama there. 
Um, my guy Rob Cinderhoff at Kent State, number 13 seed. Big upset. Well, not upset, but big win over Toledo. I think a team that I think most people yeah. pick to win the Mac, little Max and taking on Indiana. Another team that I like. I don't know if I trust them. Uh, however, where you got Cinder, uh, you know, Cindy's, he's got a squad there, man. He really does. Yeah, they've been, the Kent Mac State's been awesome this season. Yeah, been yeah. really tough. Yeah, Mac's a good league. Kent State's been tough all season. I mean, I, I don't know how much I trust Indiana as a whole. But I trust Trace Jackson Davis, and I think that he's a guy that can at least get them to, you know, pass this game. Josh, look at this. T TBS may – like, I would imagine for you, you may have four TVs for all that I know, and you've got all of the games on it all the time. But TBS, this is our lineup on Friday. VCU playing St. Mary's. Iona playing UConn. Drake playing Miami and Kent State versus Indiana. I don't know if you'll change the channel all day. Crazy. I, 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 I will keep one screen locked on that one all, all, all day long. And I'll probably still going to be right there on TBS. Okay, yeah, let's wrap amazing. things up here on the last game of the round of 32, uh, or the first round of the tournament, 64 teams. Um, in Denver, 10.05 p.m. East Coast time. Arizona State, Nevada winner with that game will be played, I think, was that game? Is that on Wednesday or Tuesday? That um, game is going to be on Wednesday night. Um, in that's going to be a hell of a game. That's going to be a hell of a game. Right there. I that's really a, that's like a really good game. We've seen teams that have gone in the first four that have won in the first round of the tournament. I actually really like the winner of Nevada against an Arizona State Nevada winner beating TCU in the first round. Yeah, I think part of part of that is Eddie Lampkin for or Eddie Lampkin, yeah Eddie Lampkin for TCU is not not with the team anymore. I think he he had some maybe personal maybe some mental health issues and stepped away. And that's I mean that's a really big presence. That's a starting player. That's a starting big. So they're they, they're down one of their starters. I mean, while they have you know a guy like Mike Miles who's a fantastic guard. I think that this Arizona State team has been playing pretty well this season. They've beaten Arizona, who I really love. And Nevada is always good. Nevada is just yeah. always a contender yeah. in the Mountain West. So I think I think, yeah, I don't I don't know that I'd have that upset. I'd have, I'd kinda have to watch that first round game to see, you know, what what these teams are doing, how well they're playing, what kind of momentum they're bringing into the tournament. But that's that's definitely not like a, a marked win for TCU. That's that's gonna be a tough game for them. I think this is a down the wire game with both of those teams. Honestly, I, I do think Mike Miles to me is like Jalen Pickett from um, Penn State, where he's yeah, a one man wrecking crew that I would that I love. I think America, if you're not if you've not watched him, because this will be the last game of the day if you're still awake, if you saw that caffeine court you know coursing through your veins, he is that kind of guy that if they do get through that first round, um, that I think in the second round, I think he has a chance to be like one of the like. He's going to have Luther Vandross singing over a clip of him at the very end of the tournament. Oh, for really. sure. Yeah, I was going to say he's got one shining moment. He's going to have a clip in one shining moment without a doubt. Who would they play potentially in the second round? I'm looking at the bracket here trying to figure out what that second round matchup would be. What what division is this? I don't know. I have, I'm looking at Matt Norlander's uh, TV schedule, so I don't have the actual bracket in front of me. Uh, I've got the bracket here, and I've just got old eyes. There we go. They would be playing Gonzaga. More than likely in the second round, yeah. So that yeah. TCU and Gonzaga in the second round—that's a game. I don't care what's going on. I'm locked in. You're locked in for that. Well, we'll probably have that. We'll probably have that podcast going as well. So uh, this has been fun, Josh. Okay, so on Friday, the most important game to go watch is what? Do you have one? I think Let me know. look through here. I think I've we know. Got for me, I, so St. Mary's in, in VCU is really a really good one. Iona, UConn. Um, let's see if there's anything that I'm actually missing. Oh, Florida Atlantic Memphis. I think Florida yeah. Atlantic Memphis yeah. for me. Yeah, I think so too. I think if you have to watch one game, that's that 920 game East Coast time on Friday night. That's the game that you're going to want to go watch. That should be tons of fun to see how that plays out. Man, Josh, this has been tons of fun. First round, we did it. We covered yeah. it. We gave you good excuses. Okay, let's, let's finish this out. I know this has been a really long pod. What's the best excuse someone can use to, to get out of work, to go watch? Well, I, I, I used to hear this all the time when I lived in Louisville and would listen to sports radio because it's such an NCAA tournament town. They would always bring up the statistic that, that this week, the first round of the NCAA tournament is statistically proven to be the, the, the time of year where men schedule the most vasectomies so they can stay home from work and watch games. So I think – I, mean, I think getting snipped is a hilarious is a hilarious excuse for that's not, okay yeah that comes with the real comes with the real cost though <laughs> oh I know I know it does but I think it's hilarious I don't think it's like it's not what I would do I would just be like oh yeah I've got a stomach bug because no one's gonna question that 
But I think it's hilarious that people go that far to, to do that. People will go that far. Yeah, I probably should do that myself. <laughs> Nevertheless, well, again, if you've gotten this far, make sure you join our bracket challenge. We've got the link below. We'll have it all over Twitter. We'll be putting it all over the place. Make sure you get in there. The winner gets a Gibson swag bag um, and some other prizes as well. Uh, you can compete, compete against Josh, compete against me, compete against Garrett Tucker, Justin Lyerly. Um, our whole staff on, on hoopsing.com will be in the, that bracket challenge. Uh, my 12 year old daughter has been kicking my ass for 12 years. Uh, we'll probably be in that bracket as well. So come by. Oh, also, also, if you're a travel team, sign up for Georgia Cup and this weekend at Swanee Sports Academy. Let's talk about how much we love Mountain West basketball. Yeah, do that. Go, go help Josh out a little bit. Go help Josh out. We'll, we'll have you covered. So, Josh, it's been fun. We'll get this posted, and uh, man, we'll see you. Uh, we'll, we'll see you on on Thursday watching all these games. Friday as well. Oh yeah.